Targeting and maintaining a constant 45 frames per second is the key to a smooth experience in Microsoft Flight Simulator. That's the sweet spot for reprojection. Reprojection is a clever technology that adds in additional frames and boosts that frame rate up to 90 frames per second. And the Steam VR implementation for motion reprojection is very, very, very good indeed. Any frame rates lower than 45, you're going to start to introduce stuttering. Make sure in Steam VR that you have got motion smoothing switched off. This is not the same as reprojection. This is typically on by default, and this will take frames away from your performance, and it will certainly add stuttering in to the cockpit. On my 3080 Ti, I set the render resolution in Steam VR to 150%, and in Sim, I set this to 100%. Now, this is the setting that's going to have the single biggest impact on the frames per second performance. But what I would recommend is that you go through some of these other settings first, have a look at where your performance is coming in, and then bring that render resolution down until you get a consistent 45 frames per second. Starting with anti-aliasing, I would go with TAA. It's the best, and there is very, very little difference in performance between the different settings terrain level of detail by default that's set at 200 i find at 150 it's much better performance and very 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 little difference from what i can see from a visual fidelity perspective off-screen terrain caching i have set at ultra that allows your gpu to do some work in the background loading stuff in that's going to be in view and in the scene uh, in a little bit. Terrain vector data high. Um, buildings, trees, grass and bushes. Set all of these to medium. I find that they have quite a big impact on frames and very little difference in terms of what you can see in the sim between high and medium. I personally opt for low on grass. There's two reasons for that. One is I've never seen such tall, strange looking grass as seems to appear with medium or high settings. Secondly, I find taxiing performance is significantly better with grass and bushes set to low. Objects level of detail, I give a little bump up to 150, very little difference and seems to improve uh, visual fidelity. Um, volumetric clouds is a biggie. Make sure that's on medium. If you set it on high, that's gonna have a pretty significant impact on the frames per second that you're gonna get. On low, it makes the clouds look like completely 2D white objects in the sky. Medium adds in enough just to make them look three-dimensional and a bit nicer in the sky. Now, texture resolution is another biggie. I have it set on high. If I drop that down to medium, I see my average frames per second bump up to about 60 frames per second as opposed to 45. Now. Motion reprojection drags that back down to 45 frames per second because it needs to be a divisible number out of 90. So I see no benefit from having it on medium. But if you are struggling from a frames perspective, then I would definitely recommend that you uh, that you dial that setting down. Anistropic filtering. I would say if you're on a 20 series or 30 series. A GPU, you, you really should be at 16 times. You can drop it down to 8, probably without a lot of degradation, but I honestly didn't find uh, a lot of performance impact. Texture, super sampling, I set at 6x6. No real loss in visual fidelity over the higher settings um, and definitely gave me some frames back. Texture synthesis at medium. Uh, water waves at medium. Of course, that only matters when you're over the ocean. Um, Shadow maps, I find, can have quite a bit of impact. So 768 is a setting that seems to work well for me. The terrain shadows at 256 and contact shadows at low. Windshield effects at high. Ambient occlusion, I surprisingly found very little impact from that. Um, if you're on a slightly lower end system, you might want to switch it to low or off. Uh, cube map reflections at 192. Raymarsh reflections, medium, light shafts, medium, bloom off, largely because I don't like it, and glass cockpit refresh rate at high, otherwise the plane becomes unflyable. Now the key settings for me, the ones really to focus in on, 
if you're struggling from a frames perspective is volumetric clouds, texture resolution, texture synthesis, texture super sampling, buildings, trees and grass, off-screen terrain caching, and terrain level of detail. Those are the settings that made the biggest difference to me. Getting those right, then look at your render resolution and start to scale that back until you get 45 frames per second. You can see from the video that you're watching here, loaded in at London, taking off from London City Airport, it's an Orbex. Add in airport as well. We've got London in the background, so a built up complex area. And whilst there is some fluctuation, it's largely minimal. We're maintaining 45 frames per second. Built up areas like this are a good place to test your settings. If you can maintain a steady 45 frames per second here, certainly whilst you're out over countryside or ocean, you will certainly be enjoying 45 frames per second. That means when you're coming in for landings, you've got a nice steady performance. So key settings being number one for Steam VR users, make sure motion smoothing is switched off. It is not the same as motion reprojection. Uh, reduce volumetric clouds to medium, texture resolution down to medium if you're struggling, texture synthesis at medium, texture super sampling six by six, buildings, trees and grass all to medium and terrain level of detail to 150. Get those settings dialed in, bring your render resolution down so you get to 45 frames per second and you will have the silky smooth VR experience. As always, I hope you're very well wherever in the world you are. Stay safe in the skies. And if you're looking for a new aircraft, why not check out my review of the Kodiak 100?